everyone. Uh, so I'm going to explain you briefly what we can do as hospital risk assessment. You might, this word, the hospital risk assessment, it might seem new to you, but uh, it's a small word. It has a big component and separate components and big word cloud embedded in that simple phrase. So you can see the hospital risk is the possibility of causing harm in very simple but not in the scientific definitions. The risk is possibility of causing harm or causing a disaster. So there's an equation you can see that risk is equal to hazard into frequency and vulnerability divided by capacity. So it means the risk equation. So the hazard, as you all know, in simple terms, hazard is a potential harmful event. And exposure is the how much we get exposed to a certain hazard or certain harmful thing or event or, or a human activity even. And the vulnerability in simple terms, vulnerability is your susceptibility. How much you are susceptible to the damages of a harmful event or a hazard. So all together, hazard exposure and vulnerability increases your risk of disaster or increase your potential damage or risk. But capacity, your own ability to withstand the damages can reduce the risk. So that's why this capacity comes in the below the line. So it's an equation. So although this risk is qualitative, some sort of it's a, uh, it's a thing that it's a uh, like you call we can uh, we feel it, we cannot measure it, but still with this equation, we can quantify the risk. We can put a number into the risk. We can give a risk score to our hospital or institute or whatever the uh, organization we are working with. In terms of quantification of risk, this is the equation we are using. So we are initially calculating a hazard score, then the exposure score, and a vulnerability score and the capacity score. So you might be thinking how we are going to achieve this. And it's a, although it appears very simple equation, you can relate the hazard score and multiply it by exposure score, multiply it by, by vulnerability score and divide it by capacity score. And then you get the risk score for whatever each and every hazards for your Institute and institution. So, in this, uh, since we are talking about hospital preparedness, so uh, for your hospital, for that, you need a lot of assessment. For example, I will go through uh, for, for home one by one uh, for hazard itself. So, there, are, as uh, Dr. Lahiru clearly mentioned, we have internal and external hazards affecting our hospitals. So these hazards we take into consideration, they could be internal hazards or external hazards. How we are going to select the hazards to quantify or give a number or give a scope? For that, you need expert opinion. So it depends on the hospital and it is the area and the, the district and also the other uh, external environmental factors you have to consider and you have to go through the available data sets, especially the disaster, a number of uh, events, hazardous events that has happened throughout the last 50, 60 years and go through this data and you have to uh, do some uh, meetings and you have to do some reviews and then you have to decide what are the hazardous events that affects our particular hospital. So for that, you need multiple uh, stakeholder involved. For example, you might need, if your uh, if your hospital is located in a 
geographically vulnerable area, we have to get the support of the, uh, other institutions like National Indian Research Organization, like they are the people who are the, do the assessment regarding geological uh, and earthquake risk, uh, earthquake hazards, and uh, earthquake and uh, sleep hazards. So, like that, you will, you will have to get the expert opinion in each and every hazard to make the list of hazards and give them a scope and exposure as well. Exposure is how many times of frequency you have experienced this hazard. So, for example, for the district of Kalutara, obviously, we, we all know we have gone through the data, we know the most frequent hazard is flood. This every year we get flood in the monsoon season. We get flood in some areas of the district. Depending on the severity of the monsoon rain, the affected area might be different, but still we are getting floods every year. So it's like that. So in that sense, we give a number to these hazardous hazards and exposure as a scope. So the hazards which has happened many times over the years and which has a very high intensity or high possibility of damage in the hospital get a high hazard score. And then we come to the vulnerability assessment. The vulnerability assessment, as Dr. Lahiri mentioned, in the hospital setup, we have to we consider structural, non-structural, and functional elements, all three aspects. So the structural elements, uh, we uh, we consider the uh, structure, the basement, beams, and the basic structure, and the non-structural, everything other than the basic structure, all these windows, doors, air conditioning, electricity, lights, and everything, it comes under and the lifelines, supply and chain and supply pipelines, everything comes under non-structural. And also the functional. Functional means all these uh, functionality, how we maintenance and our human factor. So for that assessment, vulnerability, structural, non-structural, and functional assessment. Functional, yes, we can get assessed by ourselves, but for these structural and unstructural, we need support from, we need external support, especially from the area engineers who are taking over the building uh, construction aspect, and also biomedical engineers who are in charge of the hospital. If you don't have one at hospital, there are usually just one biomedical engineer at the regional unit of health services area. And then one of the most important hazards when we consider about hospital things, one is building collapse and the other one is fire hazard because there are a lot of equipment, electricity coming up. So uh, for the fire hazard assessment, vulnerability assessment, we need to contact the area fire brigade. They will be doing, uh, for the government institutions, when we go through the proper channel with the director's uh, approval, they will do it without any charges. Uh, so they come and do a full assessment of the uh, hospital setup and they give a recommended plan of fire safety regarding the institution. So that includes where you have to do the necessary uh, changes in the building structures, where you need to uh, locate the uh, fire extinguishers, how we are going to, uh, how, we, how we must uh, establish fire exit pathways and uh, evacuation pathways. So we need for the structural, non-structural elements, we need external resources, especially the, the uh, civil engineering, chemical, biomedical engineering, and also the fire, fire brigade. So uh, that is vulnerability assessment. So even with that three elements, we have to decide a score for each and every hazard. So first, we discover, discover internal and external hazards. Then we give the severity or exposure score to that. And then we give for each and every hazard we selected, we listed out that affecting our institution, 
we do the vulnerability assessment in functional, uh, structural, non structural, and functional elements. For the functional elements, that is the maintenance and also the human factor. So the maintenance, yes, it is how we may how good we maintain our hospital. So for that, we have to look into the facts, how our what are the uh, available methods of functioning, maintaining, and what are the backup plans. For example, water supply. If our main water supply is damaged, what is the backup plan? But how we are going to get the needed required water amount to the hospital. So we need the backup plans like that and also the human factor. How good or how functional our human resource team is. That includes everyone, not only the healthcare workers, but also the maintenance, the, uh, uh, janitorial works, and also the security element. All these human uh, workers or uh, humans involved in functioning of our hospital, we have to check whether we have enough number at enough capacity and what is uh, the end uh, the the word came search capacity regarding the humans and in case of emergency what is the number that we can increase like for example if we take a uh, general hospital further in case of emergency very big disaster happens that you need how much medical officers for emergency department, you can get down from the nearest institutions like the NIHS and uh, of the Rodan Hospital and like that and also even maybe from other Yes, how many people you can get down and increase your capacity, that is the surge capacity. So for the functionality assessment, uh, we have to consider all these factors. That is the basic way of very, very short uh, uh, explanation. That's how we do the vulnerability assessment or vulnerability score. So for that, we can consider all the factors and give vulnerability score to each and every hazard. For example, we give how much we are vulnerable to the building products. If our buildings are good, buildings are in very good structural strength in the Ministry of Structural Assessment, we have very low Hazard score given for building collapse hazard. That's the uh, sorry, very low vulnerability score given to the building collapse hazard. But if we do not have enough uh, fire extinguisher, there's no fire exit pathways, then for a hazard of fire, the vulnerability score might be very high. It's like that. And then we have to do the capacity assessment. So we, in this capacity, capacity assessment, we have to consider all these uh, few, uh, our resources and all the all of uh, that includes not only the machines and machinery or material. We have to consider the human factors in how much capacity we have to deal with whichever the hazard. For example, uh, if an external uh, disaster of a mass casualty incident happened, what is our capacity to deal with that? So for each and every person, we have to consider, uh, we have to do the capacity assessment for the building collapse, for the fire, for the mass casualty incident. And for each and every person, you have to give a capacity score as well. So ultimately, you have a hazard score, exposure score, vulnerability score, and capacity score. And then you do the calculation, then it is very technical. You do the calculation and the hazards which get the highest risk score are the most possible or most uh, potential hazards that can affect your institution. But even though this explanation takes very little time, this assessment itself it take can take months, months and months, because especially the vulnerability assessment. As a years, it might take a week or two, exposure gain, another week or two, but the vulnerability assessment, because you have to go through multiple 
multiple agencies and multiple stakeholders and many people involved in this structural, unstructural, and uh, functional assessment. So with all this, you can, and uh, the best thing with uh, this uh, quantification is you can prioritize whatever the problem or hazards that you have that it might be for one uh, for Kalutara hospital, the prioritize the high potential hazard could be mass casualty incident. But if you take another hospital, for example, I did my hospital risk assessment with the Panadra Kelvinathin Hospital. People who have worked in there, they might know that it's a very old building. It's an ancient uh, antique building which is donated to the government. And uh, according to the uh, archaeological law of the country, uh, we, uh, even, the, even though they were donated, all those antique buildings, we cannot demolish or modify without permission, the deep process, permission of the archaeology department. So the uh, building structural and non-structural assessment of the K2 base of the maternity hospital it is quite different from other institutions. Maybe and also quite different from the Kanpur base hospital as well because the highest risk hazards were building collapse and fire. Because if people who have worked in uh, that hospital might remember all the floors are made by wood. Those are wooden floors in the hospital. Even the staircases are wooden. So it's a very high hazardous space for a fire. So like that, but for general hospital Kalutil, that might not be a problem because these are some modernized buildings which are built with some sort of the fire regulations in mind. So that like that. But what is the outcome of this risk assessment will be it, it might differ from institution to institution. So what you have to do is you have to involve when we are doing the risk assessment, you, the best outcome, how to get the best outcome is to include as much as possible technical expertise in the, in the process and then with the, out, uh, with the risk score, we can prioritize the hazards and then we have to make plans how we are going to uh, need, uh, face whatever the hazards or events that might occur leading to these risk factor events. And for that, you need to develop plans for each and every hazard. So hospital disaster management plan it is not, it is made depending on this risk assessment. So it's a risk based these are plan for the institution. And also it is, it should not be focusing only on one hazard. It should be depend, depending on the risk assessment, the higher the events that can be that get highest scores might be included. It might not only be the Mass casualty event. It might be mass casualty fire and building collapse, but also it can be mass casualty uh, and also tsunami threat even for a hospital which is in the coastal line like that. So you have we have to then the next step is developing the plan and SOPs and guidelines, and then as it is mentioned, the next most important thing is regular reviews and practices and also simulations and drills. Otherwise, although we did the very good, quite good risk assessment and developed a very good plan, there's no point uh, if we do not simulate and do the assessment. We do the simulations and drills just to check with the, where, where, where we can get stuck, where are the bottlenecks, where, where we got wrong, like that. That's how we develop a, a, a good disaster preparedness plan for our institution. And then contingency planning, 
that is also part of the Saskatoon Airlines planning. That is how what is the plan B, plan A here, how main plan is failing, what are the plans for other options, and then uh, that is uh, basically that's how our hospital risk assessment and disaster preparedness planning happens. And one small word about evacuations as well. Evacuations in hospitals, institutional evacuations, uh, it might be very, uh, it might not, you might not thinking that it might affect you, but it can at any moment because in hospitals, fire is a very, has a very high risk of, uh, high risk event, fire and also other chemical and also radio radiological events. But for, for all these hazards, evacuation or relocation is a must. So these evacuations, it is different process. You might be thinking uh, evacuation, you collect people to a single point and you just evacuate patients. No, just imagine we have in the hospital, we have inpatients, ICU patients, Children, uh, babies in the NICUs, TBUs, and also if it if we are functioning, if it is a sudden disaster or a sudden event, we have actually running theaters as well, theaters and ETUs as well. So when you are planning an evacuation, you have to think of all these aspects, and you know, we have to develop the evacuation guidelines for all the patients walking and the patients who can walk. Patients who are buried in the beds, patients in ICUs, TBUs, NICUs, and actively in getting treatment in theaters and uh, ETUs as well. So, when we were developing uh, this uh, evacuation plan for the Kathmandu based hospital, for all these aspects, SOPs were developed, like for the ICU patient, how we are going to take them down, and evacuation we have to do in two ways horizontal and vertical evacuation. Horizontal is how you are going to evacuate, evacuate patients in the same floor of the ward or whatever in the building, same floor, horizontally to assembly point and vertically how you are going to take them down. So for an example, in a case of fire, you can't use elevators. So you have to think with the fire brigade, you have to think and plan how you are going to take down the patients from upstairs to downstairs. Whether you are going to use a ramp, whether you are going to use the ropes, whether you are going to use the uh, evacuation uh, pockets or blankets, how we are going to do that in that uh, vertical evacuation. So for each and every unit and each and every patient, we have to think of when you are planning the evacuation and relocation. And even when the preparedness planning is happening, you might have to plan the event vehicle route as well, from which gate you are, the vehicles are coming in, from the, where you are going to reach the assembly point, where you are going to exit the vehicles, and then where you are going to take and relocate your patients yes, as the next uh, destination. So those are the basics risk assessment and preparedness process in our hospital setups we usually follow and the take home. In the summary, we can quantify the risk and depending on the risk, we can develop a risk-based preparedness plan which needed regular simulations and practices to update and develop it. And depending on that, in within that preparedness plan for a hospital, we need to, depending on our list, we need to think about search capacities, evacuations, relocations, and contingency planning. All of these are included in hospital risk assessment and disaster preparedness. Thank you very much. Over to you, Dr. Lundin.